Welcome back to the Cave of Wonders, Dreamwalkers. I am your Sith Lord Callus. I am where Star Wars lives, and this is a Sith showcase. I hope you guys can see me all right, but if you can't, it's okay because this is all about this saver. All right, if you're new here to the channel, I need you to subscribe, then hit that like button, and then turn on notifications so you can join the Dreamwalkers on our journey. Today I'll be sharing with you all my custom lightsaber build from Galaxy's Edge. This is the Elemental Nature. It's one of four custom builds in the park. Now, today I will deconstruct and then reconstruct this, late, this um, lightsaber for you guys so that you can see what it looks like in its bare bone state. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at some of the specs. Again, this is the Elemental Nature build, one of the four custom builds in the park. If you wanna know about the other three examples, um, I'll leave a description, I'll leave a, a link in the description for my um, Savvy's uh, workshop video where they list the other three. And you can actually see how I, uh, you know, I don't focus on myself actually building the lightsaber. It's more about the experience in Savvy's workshop. But again, I'll leave the link in the description. So for this elemental nature build, we've got from Pommel. I'm sorry, from emitter to pommel, it's about 14 inches long, okay? It comes with a 32 inch blade right here. You guys can see. Comes with the batteries so that you can power it up. All right, 32 inch blade. And I chose this pommel, the clawed pommel because uh, it was sort of a nod to Darth Bane and also one of the the hilts from SWOTOR. Um, I don't know if you guys, if you've read the trilogy, then you know that it's stated that Darth Bane had a clawed pommel for his lightsaber. And this is almost the exact looking uh, claw for the pommel in one of the hilts in SWOTOR. That's Star Wars The Old Republic. But this build also comes, well, all the builds come with a pin which is specific to each build, okay? Um, it's a nice little touch. It's got Arabesh writing on the back, um, but it's a nice little touch. And I purchased this stand, you'll see here, for about $15. It's a decent enough stand. It's got some heft, some weight to it. It's not too elaborate. Um, it, it was kind of odd that it didn't come with the build, but you know, it is what it is. $15 is not breaking the bank. But it does also come with this, excuse me, this sheath, all right? It's padded for the blade, padded for the hilt. Nothing too fancy about this either. It does have the Jedi uh, symbol right there. Uh, there was no issue taking this on the plane. They didn't even make me deconstruct the saber. They just let it go right through the scan, um, and I was able to walk on the plane with it with my with my carry on and my uh, backpack. So there was no issue there. But like I said, this is the 32 inch blade, 32 inches. It's the standard size when you're doing a custom uh, lightsaber because it's uh, a Shoto runs at about 24 to 26 inches. It's a little smaller, the Shoto blade. And then that, what is known as the regular size blade, some people call it the, the large, but it's really a regular size blade for the custom builds is 40 inches. Um, but this is 32 inch blade. And this is um, a medium size and it makes it more manageable. Okay, now for the custom builds, or for the, yeah, for the custom builds, it comes with it. But if you purchase one of the legacy builds, you have to purchase the save, uh, the blade itself separately for $50. And for me, I think that price is a bit hefty because this is not a dual worthy blade. It's got all of the electronics in it. So I, I can understand them wanting to charge a little bit extra uh, for it. Um, be, for that reason, it does have the electronics in it, but this is not a hefty blade at all. Um, this, you can't duel with this. It's actually 
probably equivalent to the um, uh, to the, the Force Effects or the uh, Black Series Blades. And you know, too much banging with that, and it will you'll short out some of the the pixels inside. But anyway, so I'll put that off to the side again. This is the elemental nature. Now, I, I love this, this build, okay? Uh, I love the ornate design. One thing that does bother me is that these, the designs don't line up. No matter how I try to screw them in the different ways, they don't line up. And, you know, to some people it might not be a big deal, but to somebody like me who's just real anal about stuff like that, so like when it's tight, you see, that's tight. That's how off it is. Um, so that's disturbing a little bit. And, you know, if I want to make it line up just so that it sits here and looks pretty, then it's looser. You see that? It's loose. So that was, if I had one complaint, that would be my biggest complaint is that they don't line up. But this is the, the blade itself, all right? I mean, the hilt itself, okay? The pommel is vented for sound there, and I will deconstruct this for you. So this is the emitter. Comes right off, screws right off, right? This is part of the shaft, shaft or the um, body. Pommel comes off. Sometimes people call it, refer to it as the shroud. This is the pommel. And this would actually be more of the shroud. This is what covers the crystal. Okay. And then inside is the crystal right there. Okay, of course, I'm Lord Callus, Sith Lord Callus, so I went with the red crystal. So I'll take that. I don't want to hurt it, so I'll take that out right there. You guys can see that. Okay, and this is the chassis. Um, and I plan to do another video where I um, sort of compare this with um, the with one of my custom saber forge and then also one of my park sabers blades so that you guys can see the difference. So this is the chassis. Now, if you if you do work with um, those custom saber builds, uh, you'll know that a chassis, the normal size chassis are a lot smaller. And I have one, and like I said, check out my next video, it will be coming up. I will, uh, I will show you what the, the different size is between the, um, the chassis. I wanted to save that for that video, but here we start with the chassis, okay? As is, so you guys can see that, boom. Inside is the electronics, so that pushes up. If you guys can see in there, the crystal sits sort of inside that. It's almost like a little podium and inset there. It's got two little holes so that it doesn't move. And then on the ends of the crystals are points so that they fit perfectly. So you just pull this uh, up. Oh. All right, until you hear that click and that click, and now it's connected. So you can see the light is going up through it and then it's, it's engaged. The crystal has engaged. And if you guys, if we're working with the new, um, the new Canon, you know that this is a Kyber crystal or it could be because it's red and it is, uh, I am Sith, it could be a synthetic crystal. So to, to put on the blade covers, or I'm sorry, the crystal covers, you just line these up. You see right there where that's blue and then that's blue. So you just line those up, make sure that that clicks in. And then you do the same thing with this side. So that clicks in and you hear the click, you see it's lined up. No issue there. Now this is the activation switch they have for each build two different kinds of activation switches. They actually have two different kinds of um, uh, emitters, two different kinds of shrouds, two different kinds of pommels, uh, and two different kinds of activation switches for each build. 
So that's the activation switch. The other one for this one was more of a long, uh, and, and that just didn't sit well with me because I, I just think about when I'm, if I were the, a Jedi or a Sith and I had to activate, I would just thumb up. I wouldn't click down like that. So that's why I chose this one. We will go pommel first, always with the gold to the front. My bad. Nah, my bad. <laughs> All right, I had it right the first time. So it locks up, right? The pommel, like I said, is vented for sound. Vented for sound. And it just screws in. If you guys are familiar with Saber Forge and they have their new, um, I forget what it's called, but they have the same sort of concept where, actually, I think they had it first. Uh, I don't know if they came out with it first. Maybe Ultra Sabers may have come out with it first, actually. And then Saber Forge has uh, their um, uh, their system as well. And then now Galaxy's Edge has their system where these are just pre-built and you just screw them into place over a chassis. Uh, so this is not innovative. It's not new. It's not anything new to anybody in the um, uh, Saber world. I just like to make sure that I don't have any issues with the tightness, but the problem is I try each time to make it lined up. So there it is, lined up. All right, we're putting on now the emitter. And like I said, no matter how I try to get that lined up, once it actually finishes through the um, you know, as you screw it down, it never lines up, but it's still a great looking lightsaber. And I wish I had a weight here that I could weigh this. This has some heft to it. This is not, this is not a light lightsaber. Okay. Uh, it's, it's hefty. Um, I'd say it's probably a good, has to be at least a good three, four pounds. It feels heavier than my dog and my dog is five pounds, but Anyway, the, um, it's got some weight to it. So don't drop this on your foot, especially not with, <laughs> if you have, if you have the claw and if you know the, um, the lore that that's a Rancor's claw or it should be a Rancor's claw. All right. So when you're putting in the blade, it's very simple. It, there's two places that these slide into and it's just a click. So it goes straight down, you hear that sound. So I'll do it again so you guys can hear it. And that shows you that it's activated. Heard that? And then you just twist. And that's locked in. And so when you're actually doing the build in Savvy's workshop, it's kind of cool because they have the blades actually stuck inside those tubes so you never actually see it. Once you finish your your um, your build, if you guys have seen my video, you see us do it. Once you finish your build, they have you put your blit, um, put your hilt into this uh, section, right? And then they want you to activate it. And then when you pull it out, the blade is attached. But we don't realize at first that you're actually just connecting the blade to the hilt. It makes it feel like you've actually. Uh, activated and ignited your lightsaber but I'm in a very lit room so this is not going to be so bright because it is the the middle of the day but here we go okay here's the sound and a couple good cool things you've got your swing it's not that responsive See, and that's the clash. So when it hits, it does have a, all right now, you see that it does have a, a little bit of, of a flash on clash. See that how it changes color, which separates it from your force effects lightsabers. Um, come on, bro. There. I'm, I, I don't like to hit it too hard because I'm afraid, <laughs> quite simply. Uh, or honestly, but see, that's a decent, uh, it's a decent color in the dark. 
it's comparable to the um, comparable to the uh, Force Effects or to the Black series. But when you when you put it in uh, comparison to one of the Neo Pixels or to um, Saber Forge, uh, it's it's or Ultra Sabers, it's it's pales in comparison as far as brightness is concerned. But um, you know, for what it is, it's a very nice a very nice blade. All right, you guys can see the top. There it is. Again. And. Okay. I'll take this out. And that lets me know that it has been disengaged. Now, the one thing that is concerning about it is while it's. Uh, while it's in its resting state like this, and I'll put it so you guys can see it. You should be able to you see that there's red blinking in there, which is what's showing you that the um, that the crystal is still engaged. The problem is that's still draining my battery, right? <laughs> right. And so that's the one thing that I like about with your with the actual with your real custom sabers like your Saber Forge, Vader's Vault, or or Ultra Sabers, or Parks, or Corbanth. You get the kill key. Right. You have the kill key, which kills the power to the battery. So you're not draining the battery. And so this this means with that blinking red, I don't know if you guys can see it, but if you if you own one and you look right down in there, you can actually see the red still blinking. There should be a way to disengage that. So you're not draining your batteries. I believe it uses um, double A's, two double A batteries, the same as a force effects. I always say force effects because that's the first one to come out, but the black series. All right. Um, this, so as it sits, it's a nice looking saber. Like I said, it's heavy, has some weight to it. Uh, it doesn't look cheap, doesn't feel cheap. Um, and of course, it's not cheap, but that system of, of pre-built uh, sabers is not uh, it's not new or invented by Disney. So don't don't think that that's the case. There's Ultra Sabers has their system and so does Saber Forge. They have they've had their systems in place for a couple years now. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, Disney just riding the coattails of these actual Saber Forge or these actual custom lightsabers uh, builders. But anyway, you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I will be back very shortly with another video for um, my Asajj Ventress Legacy Saber. I'm gonna do that one right now um, or right after this one. Uh, and then I'll do another one that is I'll probably not go through all the specs or anything, but just so that you guys can see a comparison between the different sabers, okay? Um, and like I said, I have, I don't own an Ultra Sabers. I've held and dealt with. Um, they are they are good in their own right. Um, I, I enjoy all of the custom uh, lightsabers and the custom lightsaber community. The, these guys I have a great deal of respect for. Ultra Sabers, Saber Forge, Vader's Vault, um, Genesis, um, uh, what is it? Corbanth. I own sabers by, uh, ultra, not ultra sabers, but saber forge parks and Corbanth. I own, um, sabers from all of those, uh, craftsmen. And, uh, I just, it, if you have the time, it's something that you want to get into. I would recommend it. It is not a cheap hobby. It's an expensive hobby if I'm being quite honest. But the one thing that is um, pretty cool about it is that, uh, if let's say you buy a, a saber and it's two hundred and fifty dollars, just let's just round it to two hundred and fifty dollars. And for whatever reason you want to come out of that, it is not difficult to sell it uh, within the community. So that's one of the things that is awesome about it. That's kind of an unspoken is that, uh, yes, it is an expensive hobby, especially if you're a collector and you're looking to get those legacy sabers because all of them, uh, Saber Forge, Vader's Vault, and um, uh, uh, Ultra Sabers, they do have uh, 
not replicas because they can't by uh, trademark purposes, they can't have replicas, but they have sabers that resemble those um, those uh, legacy sabers. So, like I said, it is an expensive hobby to get into, but it's not one that, that you can't come out of. So you spend the $250, you say, hey, listen, you know what? I come up on hard times. I need to come up out of this saber. You can put it on. There's so many different um, Facebook uh, pages and you know, you'll be able to recoup your money in no time. And if you if you choose to have a, a truly custom built saber like my um, Saber Forge Phoenix, which I call the Iron Phoenix. I've done a video about that one too. I might do another one, but if you choose to do a custom one like that, that one is in the Iron uh, Iron Man colors, uh, and then it's got the uh, spark board. It's and it's uh, it's actually gold. Uh, so if I were to choose to come out of that, I don't, you know, I could I could sell it. Is what it is. But stay tuned. Like I said, the Asajj Ventress um, build is coming up, the or or unboxing rather that's coming up. And then I'll also have the comparison. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Check me out on Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash Lord Callis. Um, and thank you so much. I do what I love. I hope you love what I do. This has been a Sith Showcase. Until next time.